Yotia. If you are watching in Uganda, the distinctive flags, what a games they enjoyed in Tokyo last year. Chemitai winning the women's 3000 steeplechase. Cheptegei and Kiplimo taking silver and bronze in the 10 with Cheptegei winning the 5,000 metres towards the end of the Games. It was most extraordinary for the Ugandans, but Cheptegei hasn't shown that kind of form this season. The one time we've seen him, he had a crack at... There he is. He had a crack at the world record here that turned out to be a little bit lacklustre by his own very high standards. He ran a 12.57. Cheptegei is listed as a Man United fan. They didn't have the best season either, either so maybe their fortunes are intertwined, but wouldn't bet against the world record holder Joshua Chapter Guy to uh, I'd love to see him recreate that form that saw him take the world title in Doha I feel like he's got to go pretty early he hasn't got the sprint of some of the other athletes particularly Borrega but if uh, Chapter Guy can put the hammer down earlier on maybe we could see him take a gold medal from the gamble Borrega is the Olympic champion Aragawi just in front of him there. Looking to go well. This is 198. Oh, no, she's got one more attempt to come. Maximum points required here. We'll keep our eye on that in the early stages as the men prepare for takeoff. Watch as well for Jacob Kiplimo. Incredible world half marathon record. 57.31. That's incredible. Absolutely amazing time. Watch out for Ahmed as well from Canada. He's got an excellent major championship record. Jack Rayner of Australia. McGorty, one of the Americans NCAA champion a few years ago over the 5,000 metres. Klecker, also in there for the host nation. Got a glimpse of Worku there to Dese Worku of Ethiopia World Junior Champion over 3,000 metres last year. Jimmy Gressier had a PB over the 5,000 in the Paris Diamond League, getting himself down to the low 13s. Big field, huge talent, massive prize on the line. The men's 10,000 metre final. Tanaka, Asian junior silver medalist a couple of years ago. Kisa, he's run a sub-205 marathon. And here is the world record holder, the defending world champion and the Olympic silver medalist, Joshua Cheptegei. A national hero in Uganda. They will be watching all over the country. Worku, world junior title. Joe Klecker won the trials. His mum is an Olympian. Takaratimana of Burundi, one of two Burundi athletes in this one. Jacob Kiplimo, world half marathon record holder, world half marathon champion, got a bronze behind Cheptegei and Borega last summer. Ugandans in the crowd celebrating before the race has even started. Ito of Japan. Then to McCourty. Third in the trials. Jack Rayner, twice a national champion. And an area record in March. As Rogers Quemoy, he made the top eight of the Olympic final last year. Matteo, third in the Canadian trials. Talby of Morocco waving to the crowd. There's Patrick Diva, NCAA champion last year. But can Borrega do the double? He took the Olympic title last year. He's so fast. 1,500, 5,000 and the 10,000 metres. Mohamed Ahmed, the silver medalist last year over the five. Fast becoming a massive contender come the big stage. Will he take some inspiration from Cameron Rogers, the Canadian just taking silver in the women's hammer? Aragawi is the other Ethiopian who we haven't seen, and Naburi of Kenya. There's Kameli, former Kenyan, now represents Belgium, 3.36 and a 13.04 man. And there is Aragawi. He won the Diamond League here in 12.50, so my gosh, he can run. Kuzera is the other Burundi athlete, 26.56 over 10k. There's Gressier, who had that PB of 13.08 in the Paris Diamond League. And Naburi for the World Youth and World Junior medalist Samuel World Junior Bronze last year this field is absolutely loaded Mayo, European under 23 champion a couple of years ago and here's Grant Fisher, listen to the noise 7th on the all time list in March with 26.33 no Americans ever won a medal in this race Rupp's come the closest with 4th in Moscow 9 years ago 
24 men, only one will be crowned champion. This is the final of the 10,000 meters. The track equivalent of the marathon gets underway. If you've ever run a 10,000, and I have, not as quickly as these men, I hasten to add, it is a brutal, brutal race. Tough conditions, but a wonderful atmosphere. The crowd here, fully appreciative of their distance running. This is Steve Prefontaine territory. Ooh, now there's been a, a little bit of an altercation there. I wonder if we might get a chance to see that again. It looked as though it might have been Jimmy Gressier taking offence at somebody chopping him up. Now, check to Guy is bridging that gap to the two early leaders, recognising that not everyone is willing to let this turn into a, a dawdle for the first few laps and then speed it up. It's Mayo, the former European under-23 champion from Spain, who leads, and he's going to try and turn this into an honest pace. That's uh, 66.7 for the first lap. So that is, just to put that in context, yeah, that's good running, it's 27 and a half. So, this is interesting, Hannah. I just say it's open to, oh, that was a full fall there from Angoro. It did look like it was almost a tangle with Carlos Mayo, so that could have been what kind of motivated Carlos Mayo to go, I'm not interested in this. Jimmy Cressy having time to all, look all the way around. Isaac Camilli raising crazy his hand saying, wasn't me. I had nothing to do with that, but Ngordo luckily up running there, and that is uh, just part and parcel of endurance running. I saw some forwards this morning, and I'm really cool as well. Penny Rapids, to be a deal with a forward that as well. Mayo happy to be out in the lead. We saw Irish McColgan, another European athlete, lead the women's 10,000 metres. Look at that, Carlos Mayo is just drifting to the outside there, offering the lead to Grant Fisher. And Grant Fisher went, no thanks, mate, I'm alright. I fancy my sprint finish. I don't want to be out there in the lead at this stage. But Carlos Mayo, he is stretching this field out. 66 second lappies. Very good running. Carlos Mayo. We talked about this warm weather, but if you, you live and train in Spain, you're probably pretty used to these kind of conditions. Carlos Mayo doing really well. And that will inspire the right likes of Jimmy Gressier. And him. Let's talk. He needs it so much in the age groups. A kind of first kilometre split in the morning. He's looking up at the screen a lot. I feel like he would love someone else to get involved in some of this early leading. It took 2.45, a great opening kilometre. Asking questions at the field right away. Well, it's bang on 27.30 pace, and he obviously decided before the race began that he didn't want to allow this to turn into a very tactical first half of the race. It's a, a rather different dynamic to the one that unfolded yesterday in the women's race and I'm very interested in the fact that Joshua Cheptegei has clearly recognised that Moya is a good enough, a Mayo rather, is a good enough runner to make this a very honest place and he's not just going to dawdle because Cheptegei followed the move right from the front. There's a Buru going down, he gets a little clip, might have got involved with Kameli and Worku. So he's gone down once and he's been tripped a couple of times as well. Uh, look out as well for Kleckers. He's running just behind Joshua Chepsky in single file. And there are two other Ugandans in that race. It's Stephen Kisa, who's running in fifth at the moment. He was second in Hamburg with a national record of 204.48. So one of the reasons I love the 10,000 metres, Hannah, you've got out-and-out marathon runners like Pisa stepping back down to the track and you've got really fast 1500 meter runners like Salomon Borrega the Olympic champion who's back in the pack who can step all the way up to the 10,000 so the middle distance athletes meet the marathon runners on the track at a midway distance of 25 laps fascinating having a treat for some cross-country athletes in there as well Jessica Chetsky picking up Uganda's first ever world dog medal at world cross-country championships obviously went, went on to take that title in Doha but the likes of Isaac Kennelly and um, Gressier, Jimmy Gressier of France a great cross-country runner so it really is a massive mix down there great to see the Americans 2, 4 and 6 
putting on a really good show in Brent Fisher. USA is so excited about him. He worked his way through the whole system, won the Foot Locker Championships, sub four in high school, an NCA champion at his time at Stanford University. Very content to sit there in second place. A lot of his teammates and training partners have had a great first couple of days. We saw Courtney Ferrix qualify in the women's sneaker chase. Carissa Schweitzer in the women's 10,000 meters yesterday go third all time in the US. And a great return to form for Evan Jager making the final in the steeper chase. So Grant Fisher and Mo Ahmed, who's content to sit at the back at the moment, the Canadian 5,000 metre medalist. They've got to be looking at their teammates and going, OK, we've got this right, we've peaked ourselves well. Take a little bit of extra confidence into this men's 10,000 metres. I'm just watching back in the pack. Salomon Borrega, not interested in what's going on at the front, courtesy of Neo and the likes of Fisher. He's just buried in the pack, just out of shot now as the camera's focusing in on the Spaniard leading. Good grouping by the Americans, as you mentioned. A chapter guy in third. Kisa in fifth. Kiplimo back in the pack. I love watching Salomon Borrego run because he's so, so quick towards the business end. <laughs> A couple of wobbly runs this year where he hasn't been quite on top form over the 5,000 metres. And when he gets it right, he's absolutely irresistible to watch. Yeah, right, Simon Borrega, and he has had a quiet season. If you cast our minds back to the indoor season, it was very similar there. He was beaten by Lemetra Germa, the steeplechase athlete, a couple of times. And it took all the way until Bell Brave really first to see the form of Simon Borrega. And he did end up winning that World Indoor Championships, 3,000 metres. He showed all his speed and all his tactical prowess there. So I'm not necessarily concerned that Salomon Borrega of Ethiopia hasn't had a scintillating season so far. Because we often use that extra gear when we move into the championship season. And we expect him to do the same, perhaps inspired by the Tessa Gide yesterday. And Tamalit Tola taking that gold medal and championship record this morning for Ethiopia in the men's marathon. So Salomon Borrega has got plenty to live up to. Ethiopian team have been a good championship so far, but he's so experienced. He'll be very happy that this is spread out and he doesn't necessarily have to think about making a big move. But he's, a, he's quite a long way off Joshua Chetagai. Joshua Chetagai there, just on your screens, with a red bib indicating that he is the defending champion. Couldn't quite make it Olympic and world titles, getting out kicked quite convincingly by Solomon Brega in Tokyo in the end. Well, and there was a good reason for that, because Borrega ran 53.9 for the last lap. So, a little bit of team tactics at play here. All of a sudden, after Mayo doing the early pacemaking duties, Kisa and Cheptegei go one and two, with Jacob Kiplimo, the other Ugandan, back in around about eight or ninth, and still no move yet from Salomon Borrega. But I wonder now... Now that the Ugandans have hit the front, Borrega will be watching very carefully. He'll be able to see on the huge screen, well, there are two, one on either end of the arena. He might start having a little look and moving through the field. And as I say that, at least two of the three Ethiopians have decided to come through, and Borrega is one of them. Coming up on the outside to now place himself. There's the first of, there's the, first of the Ethiopians, Worku the world junior champion last year and there comes Borrega recognizing the danger oh look at that we've got the world champion in second place and we've got the olympic champion in third or fourth mayo still on the curb in third with Borrega fourth and the three americans bunched up there Borrega was watching and waiting for that move and he's covered it straight away really smart running there from the Olympic champion Simon Borrega. The Ethiopian team deciding not to let their athletes double last year in Tokyo. So Simon Borrega didn't get to come back and have a go at the 5,000 metres and Joshua Chetagai did end up taking that gold medal. But, you know, as with Penrith Chemitai in the women's steeplechase, you kind of go, well, hey, come on, what would have happened if Simon Borrega was in it? We'll all get a look later in the week. Chetagai and Salomon Borrego both entered for the men's 5,000 metres. But 
what the job's doing here first, and Kissa is doing a job for Joshua Chapter Guide, just keeping this pace moving. We cast our minds back to Doha. It was a pretty quick race. Joshua Chapter Guide managing to run the sting out of Solomon Borega that time. Borega turning the tables in Tokyo, getting that sprint finish, so I'm sure that will be playing in Joshua Chapter Guide's mind. I cannot tell you the excitement that this race will be generating in Uganda. I've been fortunate to spend quite a lot of time in East Africa, in Ethiopia, Kenya and Uganda. And all up and down the banks of the Nile. In the capital, Kampala. And in Jinja, they'll be cracking open a cold one. And they'll be getting excited to see Kisa running first. And Cheptegei their hero in second but there is a long long way to go and there are a lot of high quality athletes still tracking the two Ugandans including Salomon Borega he looks so comfortable good run by Mayo isn't it a really positive deciding to go to the front you know could be easily intimidated by a race in which we have the world record holder the Olympic champion the world champion and a whole host of area and global medalists but it's what have we now just 11 11 at 4000 so they've drifted a little bit Hannah they were running pretty much on the nose 2730 and 66s they've now drifted out to just inside 28 minute pace which is why no one's been dropped off the back and maybe that's why Joshua Chepter guy has looked at his watch as we you know head towards the halfway stage and thought right okay I do need to start winding this up a little bit let's get this pack down to a more manageable size for the second half of the race yeah, it really is starting to bunch a little bit and that's maybe why you can see the likes of Canada's Mo Ahmed just content to sit at the back he knows this race hasn't really got running but you'd want to think with the likes of Joshua Chepter guy on the front you want to be pretty involved it's a good run there from Eritrea's Habitum Samuel he was moving up the outside he took a bronze medal at the World Junior Championships behind Tedese Worku who's down there so perhaps he thought know how to run with that guy I'll get back on terms we can see as there's a group there they're starting to cut across each other cutting each other up a tiny bit yes I was just watching one of the athletes almost fell and then came wide to make sure that he moved halfway up the pack we've had Stanley and Buru falling and that's always the danger when you're in these big groups heels can be clipped in fact it was Mo Ahmed who almost took a tumble he's become such a great distance runner he's enjoyed global success over the 5,000 meters with bronze medals in Doha and Tokyo he's finished just off the podium in the 10,000 but maybe this will be a different day for him he's halfway through the pack camera just focusing in on the early leader which is Mayo now back in the pack oh look at this look at this we've had Chetagai and Kisa leading and now the Ethiopians deciding to take this on Borrega hits the front just a shade before we get to halfway the Olympic champion clearly Hannah feeling confident and look he's such a hard he is such a hard athlete to beat because he can sit at the back of a very tactical race and burn up a 53 but he also knows not just talking about that 2644 PB the athletes here also know he's run 1243 for the 5000 meters and he's run very very quick 1500s he is really really hard to beat because he can win this race any way they choose to throw it at him so about 400 meters ago he really asked to get out he put his hand put his right hand out and said you know i want to exit here the athletes let him out with respect letting him do that but i wonder if he slowed this down because i was thinking some number ego he doesn't need to be at the front he's got such a kick um, so maybe having a go at slowing it down and you can see that the other athletes have lost their patience there they don't want it to be that slow I think it's Kalimo 
the half marathon specialist pushing at the front now and work who's gone with him but yeah it dropped to 67 I think it was 68 the lap before that a 249 kilometer so Kalimo going no way pal I need to all my half marathon strength on show here I'm not going to hang around running like that we're going to get this race going I feel like this move from Jacob Kalimo could be one that would split this field apart and really get it going I totally agree when Jacob Kiplimo goes to the front with a world record of 57.31 and an Olympic bronze in his locker behind Borrega and Cheptegei last year, you know it's serious. Game on here. There will be no more punching and no more games being played. At halfway, he knows his best chance of a medal is to turn this into an honest pace. And within what? Probably 400 metres? They are just about running in single file. Kiplimo deciding enough's enough with the games. So how about this? The world half marathon record holder leads. The Olympic champion is in second. The world champion is in third. And the reason for that is that rather than at their pace, dawdling around in 66s and 68s and 69s, he's put in a 64 plus change. And that's the reason the field has been split apart. A definitive tactical move here by Jacob Kiplimo. And now we have a truly fascinating race on our hands. The number of men down there that have got to concentrate the are going to start opening up. The pace might ease off again. I don't think so though. Jacob Kalimo, we've only seen one outdoor race from him so far this season. He ran 7.29 in Stockholm but he got beaten by a man who's not here, Dominic Labalu, with the athlete refugee team. But it was almost a surprise victory. I don't think Jacob Kalimo saw him coming. He got past just for 20 metres to go but that seven, sub 7.30 clock for 3,000 metres is great when your best distance is a world half marathon record quick lap there 64 seconds you can see that's the fastest kilometer i think we've had as we move through six kilometers and it's really broken the field apart jimmy gracier of france just moved himself ahead of the other europeans back there carlos mayo and isaac camelli trying to do everything he can to crack into the top 10 top eight here and just as i said that camelli's gone nope i need to get myself back on that group as well all three americans have managed to get themselves with this lift of pace but Jacob Kalimo is piling on the pressure. I wonder if, Je if uh, Joshua Cheptegei knew this was going to happen as he slotted himself into second place really well. Wow, this is turning into a fantastic race. This is real bravery here from Jacob Kiplimo. A 64 second lap right in the middle of a searingly hot 10,000 metres with a seriously hot cast list and look at that he's out into lane two tucks back in blocking Worku the Ethiopian as Joshua Chetagai now leads these two are good friends they get on well back home in Uganda there are definite team tactics at play here and the Kenyans now getting involved in the mix in this lead group. Gressier hanging on nicely just towards the back of that group. You mentioned the Americans. What a story it would be if they could go well. Schwarzer had a, she had a PB yesterday by quite some big margin, didn't she? Coming home inside the top 10. So really good running from the American women in the 10,000 metres. But we're watching here the world record holder, the world champion, the world cross country champion, Joshua Cheptegei, taking on the man who beat him to the Olympic 10,000 metre title last year, Salomon Borrega, who is on his shoulder. All three medalists from last year are in first, second and third, but they're in a different order. Is that how they will finish? Brilliant images just off the camera shot there, the Ethiopian and Kenyan flags flying high here in the stadium as well as those from Uganda the three proud East African nations well represented in the crowd I've just seen a Ugandan flag this this could develop Hannah into one of the great 10,000 meter races 
good performance there from Mburo after that early fall and getting tangled up. He's managed to stick with his teammates. All three Kenyans up there, Kamoi, Mateko and Mburo. The highest finisher was Mateko with seventh place, was Kemoi with seventh place in the Tokyo Olympics. And that, that would have been devastating for Kenya as a nation. They love to compete at the front of these 10,000 meter races, these endurance races. It's part of their culture and they're so proud. And to see those three Kenyan men up there, could they be working together? Could they be motivating each other to try and live with this pace that's been set by the world record holder? 76, so they've eased off a tiny bit from that 64 second lap and it's just allowed the rest of these athletes into the, back into the field. But Grant Fisher was going to be the only man that was going to live with this hot pace from that second pack. But just a slight foot off the gas, ever so slightly for Joshua Chaptegai, has just constantly this group back together. And every lap that goes by that's outside of that 63-64, Solomon Borrego is going to be thinking, thanks very much. Do you remember my sprint finish from Tokyo? If not, you're going to see it in a few laps' time. I think this race might be beginning to play into the hands of Selimon Borrega. Good running by Fisher, who, remember, is seventh on the all-time list. Ahmed, just behind him, has won medals over the 5,000 in the last two global races in Doha and in Tokyo. Chetagai still leads. Gressier coming wide on the outside. Cameras focusing in on the other two Americans who are still in that group. Only six laps to go now. The world champion leads from the Olympic champion. But this has slowed a fraction. We weren't necessarily expecting this. Now, there are slight question marks with Joshua Chetagai. He's one of the greats. He's the finest distance runner Uganda has ever produced. Arguably alongside Stephen Kipritich, who won the marathon in 2012. But we've only really seen him on the track once this year when he ran that 12.57. And there are plenty of men in the field who've gone quicker. And there are a lot of athletes queuing up behind the world record holder and the world champion, including the Olympic champion. This looks to me like it's beginning to play into the hands of Salomon Borrega. 53.9, remember. That was the run and that was the acceleration that took him to the Olympic title last year in Tokyo. And he is tracking every move. He's like an unwanted shadow on the shoulder of Joshua Cheptegei. And he looks comfortable, the Ethiopian, in second place. Solomon Borrega looks full of running. Look at that move from Isaac Camelli there. Has he been inspired by Bashir Abdi's bronze medal this morning in the marathon? That's the highest that we've seen Isaac Camelli so far. So proficient over cross-country, European cross-country championships. He's picked up medals left, right and centre. From Belgium just gliding up into the top five, perhaps thinking as they've moved through two kilometres to go, if he wants to get this race moving, he's got to Grant Fisher navigating this so well. Klecker beat him in the USA Championships with a fantastic kick. But kicking at your national championships is not the same as, as kicking at a world championships. Joshua Chaptegai notes that. Berega notes that. It's great to see Tadase Werku, the young Ethiopian, just keeping himself in contact there. Could he convert a world junior medal into a senior medal here? But the Kenyan trio just seem to be really asserting themselves in the middle of this pack. They're really keen to make sure they can live with the attacks from Uganda and from Ethiopia. This is a huge pack. They have one mile to go. And everybody is still in it. Everybody and some other people we wouldn't have expected to be in here at this stage. Just inside four laps to go in the final of the men's 10,000 metres. The world champion and world record holder Joshua Cheptegei leads, but he has an awful lot of athletes queuing up behind him, and he's just had a little glimpse over his shoulder, and he will have seen the Olympic champion, Salomon Borrega. Isaac Camelli, the former Kenyan representing Belgium, is there. Rogers Quemoy coming up on the outside. He was seventh in the Olympic final last year. Mburu was just blocked on the curb there, and now there are one or two running wide on the outside as Joshua Cheptegei begins to start this long drive for home. I think he's recognised that he's got to get rid of some of the athletes in this group and he's put a in noticeable injection of pace together. So the previous lap was 67. Has Joshua Cheptegei significantly lifted his pace? You'd think the way this group is shuffling around would suggest that something's happening down there, that that pace is lifted. Everybody's desperately looking for position. Keep your eye on Gar Aragari of Ethiopia. 64 seconds, that's what we thought might have happened. But Aragari on the outside, he's a phenomenal 5,000 metre runner. He's a second Ethiopian in the pack and he's quite 
quietly making moves to stay involved. He's got a super sprint finish. Could he be one to watch out for as well? Aragawi still in that group. Jacob Kiplimo is there. Fisher, Klecker for the first time, allowing a little bit of a gap to open up. And they're all starting to jostle for position. We've lost one of the Ethiopians, Tadesse Worku, the world junior champion, is in that little group just to the right-hand side. There's furious jockeying the position going on here. And Borrega now leads Mburu. What a story it would be if he won after falling on the first lap. Borrega leads. Mburu in second. Aragawi coming up. guy has got himself a little bit boxed. Diva of Great Britain quite rightly moving on the outside. And Stephen Kiesa will have to do that soon. He doesn't realise the pack are coming and he's about to get swamped getting super congested down there three laps to go 63 so they've gone 64 63 and they've got just two laps to go all of these men are jostling for position there's a lot of 5,000 meter specialists down there Mo Ahmed doing well to hold on near the back there the Canadian just up the inside of his teammate Grant Fisher they train together but Aragawi he holds the world record for 5,000 meters on the road took that record from Joshua chapter guy who's just trying to get himself back the outside of this group it is only 600 meters to go Solomon Borrega in Tokyo last year he put in a spurt at the bell got a gap on the two Ugandans and they could not get back on terms with him just 5,000 meters to go the tactics are going to come down to the wire in this men's 10,000 meters inside the last 500 meters this is a huge group of hugely talented men and take a second to listen to the noise It's deafening here at Hayward Field. Who is going to create history? This is the stadium where they say feel the glory. Any one of these men could win it. You're watching a very, very special race here. Cheptegei, the world champion, the defending champion, driving for glory for Uganda. They'll be on their feet in Jinja, in Kampala, but they're also on their feet in Addis Ababa. Aragawi hasn't been burnt off yet. The Raker's in second. Cheptegei opens up a metre. The crowd are roaring for Grant Fisher. No Americans ever won a medal in this race. Check to guy, the world champion. Can he win it again? Last year, he was burnt up by Salomon Borrega. But the champion from Doha is the champion once again here in Eugene. Cometh the hour, cometh the Ugandan. That is the best performance we've ever seen from Joshua Check to guy. He was under so much pressure. Borrega has had a great season. Last year, it was a 53-second last lap that cost Joshua Cheptegei the gold. This year, it's Cheptegei who's run 53.4. And that is why he is now a multiple world champion over 10,000 metres. They threw everything at him in that race. And just as he found in Doha, he had the answers. It hasn't been a perfect season, but it's been the perfect finish. I've never heard a noise like it on the last lap of a 10,000 metres. This world championship is delivering again and again and again. And Joshua Cheptegei is the champion of the world and the toast of a proud nation on the other side of the world. Fantastic first and third for Uganda. And what about that silver medal for Kenya? For Stanley Umburo taking a tumble in the first 200 metres and fighting all the way back for that silver medal, celebrating there with his teammates. Ethiopia had that gold medal with Nantesa Bet Gide and with Tamarit Tola in the men's marathon this morning. And Brega not able to reproduce that Olympic winning form. And it's almost as though Joshua Cheptegei has spent the last 11 months thinking, how did I lose that Olympic title? I need to train in a way that can allow me to beat Borrega. And in doing that, he's replicated an even better final lap than Borrega turned on him in Tokyo. And through doing that, has burnt off the rest of the field and got himself a fantastic gold medal. Different nation from 
wacky day, but similar in the way that Joshua checked a guy. You're kind of going, does he have the sprint finish? Yeah, that's always been maybe his Achilles heel. Until this point, Joshua checked a guy must have been dreaming of this moment for so many months. I love seeing these men just flat out sprinting down the home straight. And I'd love to see a replay and just pick apart where people position themselves in that last 500 meters because you give away time, you give away meters, and it can really come back at you. Well, I've rarely heard noise like it for a 10,000 meters, especially outside the African continent. Dan O'Brien, I'm not quite sure where you are in this stadium, but wherever you were positioned, surely you would agree the noise and the atmosphere for the end of that race was utterly breathtaking. Yeah, guys, I have to absolutely agree with you. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of the American crowd here. Everybody was on their feet with six laps to go. And after the race finished, it was standing ovations all around, Rob. We've been waiting all championships to hear that sound, that big crowd sound. And that last lap at the 10,000 meters absolutely produced it. I talked to a number of people who had tickets and said they just came here this morning to see the 10,000 meters. And that only happens in the United States here in Eugene, Oregon. Great analysis there from Dan O'Brien. And what a great performance from Cheptegei and Kiplimo. Gary Loft there on your screen. Coach to Bashir Abdi picked up that bronze medal this morning, applauding the rest of this field. It's brilliant medals. Hard, hard fought race. This is earlier on. Carlos Mayo took the field through the first couple of kilometres, but it wasn't wrong, long before the Ugandan athletes wanted to get the pace moving. Kip Limo, the first athlete, the half marathon specialist, just to try and stretch this field out. But as we moved through the bow, what there, there were still 10 athletes or so involved. We thought it was fantastic last year when we had seven athletes sprinting for the medals in Tokyo. There was even more here in Eugene at these World Championships. Do you know what was so fascinating about that? It felt to me and to you, I think, as though the race was beginning to play into the hands of Salomon Borrega. But at this point here, Borrega had a chance to come wide on the outside, but he just didn't quite have enough this time. And Grant Fisher coming through on the inside, a whisker away from becoming the first Amer American to win a medal in this event, but he replicates Galen Rupp's fourth place finish from Moscow and that was quite some winning margin in the end for Jacob Kiplimo what a race a Joshua Chapter guy Kiplimo with the bronze replicating his third behind his teammate in Tokyo and Umbura recovering from falling to take the silver medal Borega the D the Borega the Olympic champion down in fifth with Ahmed just behind him in sixth and Aragawi the very fast man who won the Eugene 5000 here in the summer. He was seventh. Let's see this again. Borrega had the chance, but he just, on this occasion, unlike Tokyo, he just didn't quite have the gas. Joshua Cheptegei did, and that was a brilliant way in which to celebrate a successful title defence. And what a rematch we're going to have. We see so many of these men later on in the week in the 5,000 metres. And the likes of Mo Ahmed, Al Gary just falling off the pace in the final 100 metres there over these 25 laps, but 12 and a half. And much more their bread and butter internationally. But they'll have one Jakob Britson to contend with in that 5,000 metres if he can safely navigate the 1,500 first and the opening round of the 5,000. You'd think they've got to go fast in that if they've got someone with three... Sub 330, 1500 meter pace, but the in, the events here, all the way from that women's hammer throw, the high quality, the high level of competition there to 25.